you have last week. So here it is. Oh. And you've also got the sketch for next week. So this week's sketch is that. That's next week. There you go. So I've. I'm watching I've, I've, so Leonard, I, I gave you some um, transfer paper so you can get it on there. And uh, we should. Uh, hey, look. Um, it's now 35 after. The class starts at 10:30. So it takes a while to set up water, all that. Really appreciate it if you get here about five to ten minutes early so we can start the class on time. Otherwise, if we're just going to go long, and um, I don't think it's fair. So, only two people here last time, so guess what? The makeup class is going to be last week's class, and we're probably only going to have one. That seems to be the rule. And since, uh, unless we have a class where nobody shows up, it's going to be last week's class. Um, speaking of last week's class, this is, uh, this is what we did, and um, the reason I have it up here, not because I'm proud of it, but because what I did last week was I just went down here in the foreground, and then when I got back, there were a couple things that I wanted to do. The first thing was, um, I didn't paint the sketch very well. I was lecturing or talking as I was painting. And then when I stood back from it, I realized that I got my dimensions just a little wrong where the paint went. So what I did at home was I took the magic toothbrush and clean water, and I got rid of all this, I got rid of all of that. Huh. And then after it dried, I came back in and redid the roof, redid the side and all of that. And then I started playing around down here, and the more I played with it, the worse it got. That's called overworking. Oh. Everybody overworks a painting at some point in their life. I do it more consistently than I'd like to admit, but that's the reason it's up there. Now, can that be fixed? Absolutely. However, since we're gonna paint this baby again as a makeup class, I'm not gonna worry about playing with it. So, I'm gonna get this thing down, and we're gonna talk about in a little bit more detail, we're going to talk about value. And some of you might remember this exercise. Oh, yeah. Do you remember that? You all painted it with me. So the purpose of that is to talk about value. If you go to the textbooks and you get into the chapter on value, and they say there are 10 shades of value from uh, ultimate light to ultimate dark and everything in between. Okay, that's great. But if you're a beginner, you don't need to worry about 10 varieties or 10 realms of value. What you wanna worry about are four. And here they are. The lightest light, the darkest dark, the mid-tone, halfway between lightest light, darkest dark, and white. You're going like, white? White doesn't have any value. However, it needs to be in your painting. And I'm gonna and we did this to demonstrate. So let's let's take let's take this painting up here. This this particular segment. This is the lightest light of these colors. These colors are uh, um, a little bit of uh, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of hooker's green, a uh, little bit of burnt sienna. So let's start with this one. This is this is the um, the lightest light and and white. This is the lightest light mid tone and white, and then this one is the lightest light, the mid-tone, and the dark. So these three, I only have three of the four that I was talking about. This one has them all. It has the darkest dark, it has the mid-tone, it has the lightest light, and it has white. So if you stand back and look at it, is it pretty obvious that you've gotta have all four in the painting. 
It creates depth, it creates interest, and it creates uh, dimension when you do that. So I thought about repeating that for this class, and I said, nah, nuts, we don't need to do that. That's just an exercise. You want, a, you want something that you can put on the refrigerator or give to your grandkids, or as Cheryl does, she sells the damn things. Where is Cheryl? I'm anyway. gonna take a picture of the leaves. Just cause? Yes, please. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. You're welcome. You should try it at home. Yeah. Okay, so in order to work with values this time around, we're going to do this painting. And in this painting, you can see the values white, lightest light, the darkest dark, and midtones. And we're also going to spend some time on the concept of hard edge, soft edge. For example, uh, let's say we're painting a lighthouse as opposed to uh, a crab pot. Um, cylindrical, right? So you've got, you've got two kinds of shadows. You've got the form shadow, which is the shadow on the object itself. And since these are cylindrical, most lighthouses are cylindrical, you've got to deal with the soft edge in the middle of that cylinder that's, that demonstrates that the light is falling on something that has a curved surface. If, if this was a block of wood with a right angle, then you would have the light on one side, you would have the angle, and you would have the dark on the other, and there would be a clear distinction. There would be a hard edge. It's called plane change accent between one side and the other. So we're gonna do hard edge, soft edge, and we're gonna do values, and that's the painting we're gonna do. So, you need to get yourself ready, and then we'll start. And the lights come in from the, Oops. the left, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah we can come pull this that way. back a little more. So you've got, so you got the shadows on the So you've got the light on the sides <laughs> of these floats that are facing yeah. the light itself. You have the form shadows on each one, and then you have the cast shadows. And what's interesting here is there's some overlap here, so this is casting a shadow on this mm -hmm. in addition to the form shadow that's on it. Oh, that's cool. Like so we'll, we'll beat it up in a minute. So there's oh, two sure kinds of shadows. Okay. Did you say there was two kinds of shadows? The form shadow and the cast shadow? Mm -hmm. Okay. The cast shadow is like a tree showing, showing right. a shadow on the meadow. And then the form shadow is the shadow on the tree um, itself. them in the palette. I'm going to let them introduce, I'm going to introduce raw sienna into cerulean blue on the paper. Let me slide this over just a little bit. So we're going to do this, uh, this background wet on wet. And um, so to that end, what I want to do first, as I always suggest, is to get your colors on the palette before you wet the paper. So, we got some cerulean blue going on here, probably enough. Let's see, yeah. Let's hit these again.
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet the paper, and I'm going to wet the paper around the floats. <clears throat> I don't care if I um, get wet on these uh, these sticks that are hanging down because they're going to get dark. Uh, and in watercolor, you know, you paint from uh, from light to dark. So starting up here, and then working my way around these floats. Now this isn't critical because we're going to come back in with some shadows close into all of these. So if you, uh, if you don't cut this water in real tight, please do not worry about it. Okay, check on the side, see what I got going on. Yeah, it looks like it's a little bit more water here. All right, cerulean blue first, and a fair amount of water in it, so it's going to be fairly light. Big strokes, big strokes. I'm going to vary the value a little bit. <clears throat> bold with your application of paint. So, if, for example, if I come in and I just do this, I got a line. I don't want the line. Let's see there? Oh. All the way. Now, it's running downhill, so it doesn't bother me at all. Okay, so we have our dangerous little drips that uh, always create havoc. So I'm going to pick these up with a thirsty brush, and I think I like that. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe just a little bit more cerulean. Well, excuse me, uh, cerulean up here at the top. Just uh, there we go. Mm. And once again, gravity works. Thirsty brush. The brush. First your brush. Okay, that's that's the background. It's really in blue. Raw Sienna. Introduce the raw Sienna into the civilian. And um, just big broad strokes without being overly deliberate. <clears throat> so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start putting in oh, yeah, the. Uh, We'll be back open at 12.30. Oh, sorry about that. Thank you. Oh, my, okay, good. I was like, I hope my sign didn't fall off the door. Oh, I didn't do anything to submit that. Sorry, thank you. I know that guy. Um, you know that guy? Where? No. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start putting in the first application of the cast shadows on the wall. And um, so what I want to do is I want to have in one hand, you got to have three hands to do this. you got to have one hand for the for the brush that's going to blend the paint, one hand for the brush that's going to paint the paint, and one hand for the Kleenex that you're going to use to lift the paint. Are you getting a lot? I'm seeing a lot of reflective and shadows. I've got he's. I've got some shadows. You're casting out. shadows on. Uh huh. Oh, him standing moves? there. Yeah. It's like keeps moving. Oh, yeah. yeah. The shadows keep moving. 
Try turning that middle switch off on that uh, ceiling fan. Above you. Above you. Above you. On the behind you. The chain. Mm -hmm. Just pull the chain in the middle. I want to see if it changes anything. Does that help at all? That makes it worse. Okay. Yeah. yeah turn it back on then. Okay. I was hoping it would. Well, okay. The light from the. That's the door. door. Yep. That's what it is. It's the door reflecting. It's okay. It's fine. We're gonna mix side by side ultramarine blue and burnt sienna, and I'm gonna to tend towards a blue gray here. Okay. So let me just go ahead and get that going. We're going to use a lot of this mixture, so don't don't hesitate applying it. A lot of it on your paper. This is where your test strip is going to come in handy. If you need one, let me know. Uh huh. Do you need them? All right. Oh, it's gonna happen. Here it goes. Here it goes. Here it goes. Here it goes. Um, so I'm gonna start. Start right here. I got these damn things, I might as well wear them. <laughs> Stop. Clean water. Put the paper below it. It's easier to do this going downhill than it is uphill. easier to drag this color down. That's the first application. Now I got cast shadow over here. What I'm going to do there, and every time you do this, I could have turned this upside down to get that to flow up, mm. but I didn't. But I want to show you since you've got smaller paper, smaller boards right here, I'm going to use gravity to help me go down that way. Oh, that's good. It just splattered all over the other thing. Yeah, oh, that, that makes it nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait a minute. Let me let me show you something. There are other ways to do this soft edge. One way is to wet the paper first. So let's just do this. Here we go, clean water. Right through there. And then, paper's wet. Mm. That's not doing what I wanted. There it goes. Um, was your, were you dry? I thought you had your paper dry when you applied that. What's, what's again, please? Was the paper dry when you applied that? No, it really wasn't. It should have been, but in the interest of time, oh, okay. I'm, right. I'm, I'm, I'm moving on. I got you. I okay. just don't know how you're not going to get blooms. 
If I'm not saying we won't. Yeah. Oh, okay. If what I do is go into the pistol ridge. Okay. <laughs> I thought I was going to protect the painting if I put it over there. No, not in, no, it didn't happen. <laughs> My big brush threw paint all over it. Well, it just makes it more interesting. Than okay, there we go. Well, it's a, the saying, if you get a few dots, put a few more and make it sound like you like you meant to do it. You yeah. meant to. Oh, I sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's it. Absolutely. That's it. Okay, so that's the first application to cast shadows, and um, we're going to go after it even more. So take your time with it, um, and you let gravity help you. When, it's gonna, when you want it to flow from one spot to another, flip the board so that the, the other part is below, and gravity will assist the paint. But you notice, hard edge, soft edge. And that's where the blending comes in. Painting vertically, of course, you always run the risk that it goes to places. So, or you don't want it to go. So, I'm just going to take, I'm just going to take the toothbrush with clean water. And I'm just going to try and lift that right there, just a little bit. What's critical about that is that's that's the side that's right. going to be in the light. It's not mm -hmm. going to be in a shadow. If it was going to be in a shadow, I wouldn't worry about it. Okay. There we go. Okay. So I'm not going to worry about anything on the outside around. I'm just going to deal with the uh, with the bands on the floats for the time being. Sunlight's coming from this direction. Cylindrical. So what I want to do is I want to get a variety of warm colors, but I want to stay uh, harmonic. In other words, I don't want to go bright red, bright orange, bright magenta. What I want to do is I want to make each one of these have some kind of similarity in color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take permanent red deep. I'm going to take some yellow off to the side of that and mix them together at the margin. And lo and behold, two primaries, you got a secondary. So I'm going to get orange. Um, so let's start. Once again, I'm right handed, so I'm going to paint from left to right. You know why? Because if I painted from right to left, I'd do this and it uh, wouldn't, wouldn't be a happy thing. So here we go. Now once again, I'm going to take this clean, clean brush with clean water because we have to deal with a soft edge here. The hard edge is going to be away from the light as well as up around the ring of it. So go a little darker. Less water. What two colors are those in? Sorry. This is permanent red deep. Okay. And stop. Clean water. Take some of the water out of the brush. Wipe this over here. And just bring that around. Okay, that's almost pure permanent red deep. Pretty consistent with what I've got there. <clears throat> Going on the far, far side, a little bit more yellow. Now, I'm, I, I'm saying I'm painting from left to right. I better do the one in the middle. Uh, so this one is maybe a little bit of a reddish orange. So come 
Stop there. Clean water, clean brush, good portion of the water out of the brush. And I'm just going to soften that edge closer to the light. And a little, a little far over, I think I'll just go ahead and sweep the Kleenex like that. Now that doesn't quite look like that yet because we're not close to the end though. Look at that. And one on the other side, it's going to go a little bit more yellow on him. And my reading glasses are sitting right there where I can't use them. I don't know why I'm doing that. Okay. There we go. That brush stroke, the arc, that once again, creates the illusion of sip of a cylinder. Mm -hmm. If I went straight across, I would be looking at a, a two by four. Okay. So I'm gonna wet this, shade it out a little bit. A little bit more water, lighten it, and then with a Kleenex, lift it up away from the light like that. <clears throat> That's all we're gonna do for that step. So, from it red deep and yellow, and go from very mixtures of red to yellow to orange. And then we're, at some point we're gonna make these things look really gnarly, but this is this we're not there yet. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put uh, form shadows on, and um, let's see how this works out here. All right. So, once again, a um, clean tissue, a uh, damp brush, a brush with ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. I don't want to go a little darker value here, which means less water. So I'm going from a, a blue gray to almost a blue black. So light's coming from this side. So form shadows. That's all I'm gonna do. Or it might be even too far. Let's wet the paper. I'll lend this down. Go too far, the paint dries, it's not going to want to move.
this. Let's open some of that up a little bit. Okay. Now, this guy, on brush. As far as I want to go. Hard edge, soft edge. <clears throat> right across there. Okay, so we've got a shadow, now a cast shadow from this guy to this guy. And I'm not going to do that yet because um, everything is just a little, a little too wet. So I've got to put that in at some point. Um, I don't like that hard edge there. That wasn't intentional. Let's see what I can do about it. You're going to want your stripes to be kind of dry, so if they're not, uh, use the hair dryer, and you know how to check it, right? Use the back of your finger. If it's if it's uh, dry and cool, it probably needs to dry a little bit longer. Okay. So, Phoenix in one hand, lending brush in the other. Painting brush in the other. Now how do I do it? So we're going to darken some of these shadows a little bit. Not all of them, just some. I want to be dark to start over on this side a little bit. That's enough. Soft, soft edge, soft. Put it out of the brush and blend it. Like that. Okay, nice. Just without dropping a brush or two. Lots of water here. I didn't like that. Nope. This is going to have a cast shadow over there. And this is where I need to be a little precise on the edge. So here we go again. Okay. I'll stop. I'll blend that edge. Two more. Bring it back. Stop. See that stripe's big enough I can grab the other side and blend it. Touch this one. This guy's not quite what I want. All right, so I have, still have this mixture. I'm going to go to the big brush. What I'm going to do now is.
graduate of the Marine Corps School of Audiovisual. And you think that's true, I'm just kidding. Okay. I'm gonna go for a bigger blending brush because I want to be somewhat bold in this. Darken all this up again. far there, but I can fix it. Water below, and then blend it down. Hard edge, hard edge. Water. Decided to flow down from the lining, which I don't like. But you got you got the technique right. Okay, one more one more spot right here. The dark start rolling in, and that helps a lot. So, um, what I did, I didn't want to get too far ahead of you. What I did was I came back, and I knew that I had to have a separation between this float and that float. So that was that separation was going to be defined by the shadow from one onto the other. So, this is a form shadow, and then on this one, you say that's a form shadow, but that's a cast shadow because that's throwing it on board there. And then came in with the same mixture and just hard edge, soft edge all the way down in a kind of in a pleasing fashion, pleasing fashion, so to speak. Uh, instead of just going straight down everywhere, I gave it a little bit of uh, movement. And, uh, and then we're gonna come back in and we're gonna funky it up. Okay, to the point where perfection is the enemy of good enough. That's a little better.
going to put in some detail. Same, uh, same mixture of ultramarine blue born sienna on the blue black side, so to speak. So it's going to be consistent application of color, maybe a little bit darker value, which means less water. Okay, so we've got a hole up here, there's lines coming out. I'm gonna play with that line in a minute. We want this hole right like that. And then, oh, oh my goodness, there's a crack. All right, so there's that guy. So we got another one over here. There's a line coming out. Here's the line. We'll do that stuff a little bit later with a thinner brush. Um, Want to come in and put in the base of these things. skipped. I've got some white paper. Yeah. I'm just going to leave it. Oh my god. It's going to work. This guy over here. now is I'm going to put some detail on these floats remembering once again that the application of darks are going to be on the opposite side of the uh, of the light so coming back to permanent red and yellow and I'm going to have a blending brush in my hand which is right here Let's start on this guy. Let's go a little redder. There we go. Something like that. Soften it in spots. This one. Soften all that stuff. Still want to preserve this arc right through here. Don't want to, don't want to blend it too much. Just want to have a couple of funky spots there. This guy maybe a little bit more. Okay, I'm not going to do any more than that. 
Um, <clears throat> so we've got these sticks that are floating down, or hanging down, I should say. Let's just take a flat brush, add a little bit more burnt sienna to our mixture so we get a dark brown. I'm just going to swipe it like this. And by doing that, I create some interesting effects at the uh, bottom edge of that. So I'm just using, of course, I should have been over here first, but you know, what do I know, right? And then the other side. Now I'm going to take a really thin rigger brush and get it out. Come on. Come on, baby. There we go. Back to Ultramarine Blue Burnt Sienna, the same color we've used for all the shadows. I'm going to go dark and I'm going to go thin with it. So let's get. Uh, Let's get this stuff going a little funky here. So if this is a crack down the bottom, that crack's gonna be a little bit bigger where it originates. It's gonna go up. It's going to get smaller as it goes. I'm just going to soften those a little bit. You can do that as much as you want, just don't overdo it. Okay, so this guy. play with that anymore. You notice this side right here, I, I, I painted the sketch incorrectly. So when I go home, I'm going to darken that up to create that new uh, outline right there. Uh, the other thing is we've got some lines going up and you notice I painted over them. At least in this case, I definitely painted over it. So let's just take a second and grab a stiff brush with clean water and I'm just going to lift the paint just like this so using the chisel edge of this stiff flat brush I'm just lifting the paint as well. Now what we could have done, we could have used liquid mask to protect the white of the paper underneath this. And I suppose that if we had had more time this morning, that would have been a good thing to do. So pick that up like that. But I'm going to take this dark 
then brush again. And so well, paint would be helpful. Stop there. It's probably play with it a little more, but I'm not going to. It's, it's your class. Yeah. And then tell you, I'm going to take this home and I'm going to play with it, and I'll tell you in a second those things that I plan to do with it. But the next step is give the illusion that these things are hanging on a wall. So just a little bit of architectural detail. And I'm just going to take the fine rigor brush that I use for putting some of the cracks and separation in the floats. And I'm just going to go from top to bottom with a rigor brush. Not everywhere. The lines are just going to go straight up and down. They're probably not going to meet. It tells a story. They're not exactly the same distance apart. do that and then you got to know when to stop and then the last thing I want to do is probably take a little bit of color on a round brush and just do this and oh, stop speckles. I know those speckles. once again you can have too many splatters just like you can have too many cracks. So what, I, what am I going to do when I take this home? I'm going to redefine this edge. This is going to get a lot darker because by painting that shadow back there, I will conform back to the way the sketch was done. I painted incorrectly around the sketch itself. I notice that this is a little off center, this stick coming out. So I'm either going to just completely get rid of it with a toothbrush and then reapply it more center and then down and maybe make them a little longer and try not to overwork it. And we'll see how it goes. Uh, what I might also do is maybe turn these lines into something that's uh, brown. They could be white lines, but I didn't want to spend the time trying to lift all that. That would just take too much time. So I can either make them white by putting aqua cover or white gouache over it, letting it dry, or I can just make those lines um, uh, of darker material. So that is, that is it. And then, of course, sign it, mat it, frame it, give 